The first property is the commutative property. And just like, you know, your parents or you, you know, you take a commute, right? Like you drive in your car, you're moving. Okay, so when you think of commuting, you can think of moving. And I'll show you the property here. There's one for addition, okay? Actually, we'll do the addition ones here. And then there's a property, a commutative property for multiplication. So we're gonna do both. So basically in your book, they would show you something like this. A plus B equals B plus A. So you can see what they did is they commuted or they moved the location of these two quantities. And I'll give you an example, like three plus four equals four plus three. That's pretty obvious, right? Three plus four is seven, four plus three is seven, they're equal. And it's the same thing for multiplication. They'll write the property like this. A times B equals B times A, or you could say three times four equals four times three. 12 equals 12, right? So commute, think about moving, okay? Commutative property. Now the associative property, think about who your friends are. Who do you associate with? You know, who do you hang out with at school? That's your group, right? <clears throat> so when you think of the associative property, think of grouping. So for example, in your book or in your class, they'll show you something like this, A plus B plus C, equals a plus b plus c. Notice the order didn't change like the commutative property, but what they'll show you is that they're grouping or associating the first two quantities, and then over here they're associating or grouping the last two quantities. So an example would be like one plus two plus three equals one plus two plus three. So I'm gonna group the first two, here I'm grouping the last two, I'm just changing how I'm associating or grouping. But you can see this would be three plus three is six, here we do five first, plus one is six, but six equals six. So with multiplication, we'll do the same thing. A times B times C equals A times B times C. It's just a matter of which ones do you multiply together first. So if we do the same kind of numbers here, one times two, or do we do two times three first? Doesn't matter, this would be two times three is six, this would be six times one is six, six equals six, you get the same answer. So again, commuting, we're thinking about moving, Associating, we're keeping the order the same, but we're grouping, okay, like associating. And now identity property. Now when you look at the word identity, you think of what? Identical, like the same, right? Like identical twins. And so for addition, it's like this. A plus zero equals A. See, if you start with A, you end up with the identical quantity, A. An example would be three plus zero equals three. Anything plus zero will be its identical self. So just think, if you look at the term, it'll help you to understand what it is. Same thing with multiplication, but this is more like a times one equals a. So if you take any number and you multiply it by one, you get the identical thing back. Okay, so you're with me so far? Are we memorizing these? Commutative, you move. Associative, you group, but you don't change the order like commutative. Identity, you get the identical quantity back. So adding zero, you get the identical quantity back. Multiplying by one, you get the identical quantity back. So all you have to do with these properties is add on commutative property of addition commutative property of multiplication, associative property of addition, associative property of multiplication, identity property of addition, identity property of multiplication. So you add on whether it's for addition or multiplication. Now a lot of students will say, hmm, isn't there one for subtraction or division? And these properties uh, only apply to addition and multiplication. Okay, so inverse property, inverse is like this. So a plus negative a equals zero. So if you take any number and you add the negative quantity, those are gonna undo one another. Like the, they're the inverse of each other. They undo one another and you get zero. So if you walk forward three steps and you walk backward three steps, that's like a negative three step. You're back to where you started, you're at zero. So inverse is like undoing, okay? And so this is the inverse property of addition, but the inverse property of multiplication is a little bit different. It's a times one over a equals one. So an example would be like three times one third equals one. It's kind of like if you, you know, multiply by three, the inverse is to divide by three, but dividing is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So anything, if you do one over that number, when you multiply that, you're gonna get back one. So with multiplication, getting back one is like un undoing or the inverse. So we've got inverse property of addition, you get zero, okay, by adding the opposite sign. With multiplication, you multiply by the reciprocal, and that gives you back the number one. So this is the inverse property of multiplication. Okay, now the property of zero and the property of negative one, these just apply to multiplication. You don't have to worry about these for addition. But the property of zero is like this. Uh, if we do it symbolically, a times zero equals 
zero. So five times zero equals zero. Basically saying that the property of zero is whenever you multiply by zero, you get zero, okay? And the property of negative one is like this. A times negative one equals negative A. Basically, you take any quantity and you multiply it by negative one and you're gonna get the same number but the opposite sign. 